Hi, my name is Kurt Mumel, and I'm the Chief Customer Officer at uh, Dataiku. For this Fireside Chat, I'm joined by Chris Kakanat, uh, Senior Director of Data Science at Pfizer. Uh, welcome, Chris. Would, would you like to say a few words to introduce yourself? Sure, thanks, uh, Kurt. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Chris Kakanat. I lead a data science team at uh, Pfizer. Um, mostly been working over the last several years in the uh, commercial space um, across various um, business units, uh, globe, global as well, and in, in terms of different regions, and uh, really focused in on you know, starting to industrialize data science at, at, at Pfizer and analytics, and how do we actually start scaling those capabilities? Um, and really excited to be here and, and talk talk a little bit about our journey. Well, that's great. Thank you, Chris. Um, now. Over the years that you and I, we've been working together, um, one of the things that's most impressed me is just how deeply ingrained data analytics and let's call it AI is to the business culture at Pfizer. You guys are really operating at a pretty significant scale with thousands of projects, thousands of people participating in the AI development process, hundreds of thousands of data sets. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about where you are today and where what you see coming down the line? Sure, sure. You know, maybe I'll start a little bit of, you know, sort of how we started this journey several years ago. And um, I think if you look at the slide, the first slide I have up, where we, we start looking at about five or six years ago, um, Pfizer sort of developed a plan to have an organizational technology transformation to move from a, a siloed organization where we were, if you look at these dots, they're basically representations of analytic functions across the globe. Um, and we were very disconnected. We had different types of uh, technologies, different processes, different people uh, that have been hired throughout uh, the legacy organizations. Uh, we're a very uh, historic company. You know, we've been around for 170 years. So it's you know, all this sort of, you know, people call technical debt. There's a lot of debt in terms of different processes set up. So what we wanted to do is actually start first by you know, linking these organizations together. Um, and so what we, what we tried to do there in the, in the second slide is really start saying, how do we start combining the, the collective intelligence across the, the organization? So the, the first area we tried to uh, really emphasize is how do we empower the colleagues across the globe to master uh, data sets as, you know, there's a huge proliferation of data, obviously, there's um, different technologies out there, different skill sets. So how do we empower every one of our colleagues, no matter if they're a clicker or a coder, to be able to leverage uh, the technologies. So that was really one of the first pieces. How do we get these um, th these sort of muscles moving in terms of uh, touching and interacting with the so-called big data? Uh, the, the second area is around uh, transforming the way we engage with our business partners. So really moving from a monologue, uh, analytics has a history and data science has a history of more of the Oracle sort of in the back and, you know, this is the model, this is what it says. We tried to change it to really a dialogue amongst our partners. And we, and we did this in, in a couple of ways, not only um, creating sort of interactive uh, visualizations and sort of output to, for, to allow people to really interact with the models, but also how do we uh, bring them together physically in a, in a space? So building interactive studios where we, instead of having like a six week project where we have PowerPoints, we're actually co-creating, building in real time, uh, doing what if scenarios. So if there's a question, we can answer those things in real time in, in the room. So really pushing analytics to the point of decision making. Uh, and the third area is around uh, leveraging AI and machine learning for speed and smarter decisions. Um, and, and there, what we tried to do is, how do we start testing out applying AI and ML to a variety of uh, business types, of business questions? So don't always try to use machine learning AI for every single project. What are the right types of projects to start leveraging that? So we started you know, testing um, different types of sort of POCs or lighthouse projects to figure out where's the right fit for these types of, uh, these types of initiatives. Um, and so those like three areas really around empowering our colleagues, uh, transforming the way we interact and engage with the actual uh, business partners, and then leveraging new technology, machine learning, AI to, uh, to scale. Well, 
I'd like to I'd like to dig into that first dimension a little bit more, just the the people uh, on hand, because one of the things that's really pretty uh, fascinating about the the way that you've gotten these teams to work together is how you've succeeded in it, allowing these individuals with vastly different skill sets, right? From you know some of the advanced data scientists that you have working in you know, Python or R, uh, working alongside you know, maybe data engineers who are experts in Hive or Impala or uh, SQL or uh, Scala now. <laughs> um, uh, but at the same time, right, with, uh, with this vast population of business analysts, uh, of marketers, uh, you know, of, of really business-oriented profiles who may not be comfortable in code at all. I think you refer to them as, uh, as clickers. Um, can, can you tell us a little bit more about how you how you made that happen? Yeah, I mean, so, so if you you know if you take that same visual I have with the with the, with the with the dots, they're actually people. So on, on the third slide, you really look at you know, here are the actual folks that are there. Um, and when we're talking about the the different uh, profiles, you know, you have Matt, who's a business analyst in the U.S. You have Alex, data engineer, uh, out in Europe. Uh, Olivia is in in Australia, and you know they're all working on different projects, different uh, initiatives. But how do we actually connect these folks together so that way, uh, given this certain type of project, they're able to figure out, you know, what is what, what put the collective skills. So what we've been able to do is instead of having silos of, of skill sets. So in, in in other words, you know, a data engineer being able to say oh, hey, Matt, why don't you take a look at my uh, sort of data flow and understand what I've done? Um, maybe here's some of the metrics that you requested, but the actual business analyst is able to go in and understand, you know, where did it actually come from? Was the metric, how was it calculated? Did it include a certain inclusion criteria? So all within the same workflow versus, uh, you know, these types of questions over email. So it's very similar to, you know, sort of, the Google Docs or these online collaboration, if people are familiar with you know, the Miro boards, you know, sort of this like real time uh, situation where you have different uh, skill sets sitting there. So I think one of the pieces is removing the barriers of sort of this being scared of uh, the technology or, or, or certain types of you know, uh, skill sets, you know, oh, this is code, this is very scary, but you know, sort of unmasking all this type of types of things across the organization. And then also really making things reusable. So the actual, depending on the expertise, um, we can actually plug that component into another part of the workflow. So if, if I'm a data scientist and I've developed maybe a really nice way of doing interpretability on a specific uh, machine learning model, the actual maybe business analyst or data analyst doesn't need to know the details underneath, but they can uh, leverage a reusable component that uh, if there's any questions afterwards, they can always reach out to that person. But you know, allowing this sort of self-serve uh, plug and play methodology is what we've seen. You know, it, it, it is a change in terms of people having to um, move away from their own silos that they've developed and their own ways of saying, hey, maybe I should explore uh, different areas. But we find that, that it really brings out the curiosity among, uh, among people. Well, and Chris, that's really interesting, right? Breaking down these silos and uh, getting people to work together. And I mean, you can tell me, but it sounds like that's ultimately what you're trying to get for the business is to have these individuals with all these different backgrounds, all these different skills, really express that creativity uh, in a collaborative way. Can, can you tell us more about that? Yeah, I think it's, you know, one of the pieces in, in, in a large organization is that we're often tied to our titles. And I think people have this um, or our role. Uh, so if a person is playing a role of a data scientist or if they're a business analyst or data analyst, those terminologies are, are very vague depending on where you are in the organization and your experience. And so what we find is that no matter the background or your, what, you, what role you play on a project, it's more about the collective uh, group coming together. So even though someone might be in um, more of a decision-making role, and perhaps they're a, a business analyst or a data analyst, their background might include various things. They could, they could have a background in statistics, machine learning, et cetera. It's just that in that current position, they're, they're not playing that role. Uh, being able to provide different perspectives for the problem at hand is really what, what I think brings together, like amplifies the, the business outcome. So you'll find that, um, especially on the, the, the business side, you really get some exciting response in terms of, wow, okay, this is how it's done. I can go in and understand it and manipulate it. Now, this doesn't happen 
everywhere. I mean, obviously there's different profiles out there uh, depending on the project, but enabling it and, and, and allowing people to, to go in is what I think is sort of game changing in a way. It's almost that option to go in um, and understand. So similar to if you look at like a Waze or a Google Maps type of direction, you know, oftentimes they'll give you the preferred route and they'll also give you two, two or three other routes that may have no tolls and might have a gas station along the way. But here, it, it, you know, the user or uh, end, end consumer of the content has sort of a little bit of uh, sort of a, a ability to play with the with, with the results depending on that, um, depending on the situation. And so I think enabling that type of interactivity is really critical. That's great. Well, that gets us, uh, you know, quite naturally to the uh, to the question of the technology to the to the platform. Um, one of the things that I feel that Pfizer has done exceptionally well has been to think about the needs of your teams, really from really a user experience perspective, almost like you're a product manager designing a product. Um, can you share with us how you've gone about that and what it's delivered for your teams? Yeah, I mean, this is a pretty uh, recent uh, item. I, I mentioned the story in, in the beginning of the, the chat here around linking uh, moving from a globalization, uh, from a central like local market to a, 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 a global interconnected organization. And that was one part of the enterprise. I mean, that was a, the, the commercial arm that we looked at. Um, but as we start thinking about manufacturing and R&D and sort of linking together both from a globalization, but then cross sort of functions, I mean, that, that's a much different, uh, much different effort. And so what we've tried to do is try to, similar how you take apart um, business processes or build a, a, a software product, thinking about features, thinking about cross horizontal capabilities. Um, what are domain specific capabilities that we tend to think on? So a lot of analytics is delivered end to end project specific or a specific dashboard or report. But if you take apart that one uh, sort of KPI or one chart or one model, what are the different components that make that up? And then how do we as an organization build those sort of Legos or building blocks and deliver them similar to a platform as a service or analytics as a service. So thinking, you know, transforming the way our organization and our our, our efforts are being developed to start de developing almost like an operating system for analytics. So you'll, you'll essentially have the core engineering foundation on top of that developing sort of like a developer experience. You can think of this like an SDK, uh, where app developers can build different uh, components. And then if you think about uh, analytics as an application or a service, you know, the, the way we're looking at it is you can have sort of the data products, you can have services. This could be either a translation service or maybe a machine learning scoring service. And then you have a, a sort of an application that combines different metrics or data products or uh, KPIs or services together and then start develop, start organizing our development teams along those lines. So thinking about what is the core developer experience? And when I say developer, I'm thinking of, we're thinking about it as app developers. What is the core platform team? And we're thinking really as an operating system of analytics where we have, what are the, what are the sort of APIs or SDK? What are the underlying engineering frameworks that we need to, to keep up with the latest sort of cloud technologies or whatever technologies are out there and abstract it out? So this way we have um, almost like a a platform for for app for analytic application developers to to build their own unique application. Yet they're using reusable components. So I think that's one of the critical things is um, seeing seeing analytics as a, a whole list of connected components and how do you define those and actually build those out over time. Uh, and so that's been a really big uh, change in the way we've been thinking about it over the last uh, I would say year or so. Um, and I think this will enable us to, you know, if you look at analytics, a, a simple chart or a simple model, how do you take that across the organization? So if we're developing um, some kind of service or, or, or a metric, you know, can we take that from a, de a, a bench top scientist who's in a, in a laboratory and then somehow connect that to uh, the manufacturing floor, right? Or the, a, a desktop or, a, or their web browser in, in an office. So how do you reuse those components across different modalities and different contexts? So really contextually aware analytics without having to custom code things. And so that's really, I see a big part of where we're going towards um, to help both standardize, but then at the same time make analytics more configurable uh, for the end user. 
Well, and you know that notion of getting people to to work together. You know, we we talked about the collaboration between the individuals. Now, about the interaction between uh, you know, the the team, the people, and the uh, the platform itself. About that enabling reuse, knowledge sharing, um, collaboration that uh, that wouldn't have been possible otherwise. Now, one of the things that you know, is really key to doing this at scale, from what I gather, right, is this notion of that connectivity among the people, but also the people and the technology. I've heard you describe that as the graph, and I remember you telling me some anecdotes about how you built that graph in the early days. I think that involved quite a few uh, frequent flyer miles. <laughs> is uh, is that right? Yeah, I, I think so. You know, the move obviously to sort of cloud and the, the ubiquitous nature of computing and data, et cetera. You know, in the past, uh, I mentioned we we're a siloed organization moving to the, the, the sort of the globalization. Um, you know, th that was really by going to these local uh, areas and understanding their business problems, looking at their data on the ground. I mean, this is, you know, 10, 15 years ago where you'd fly in places. That was you flying from. You know, from New York to Paris, Japan. New York to Tokyo, yeah. right. and understanding, you know, hey, okay, here you have this business problem. It's uh, very similar to something we've seen in another country or another region. You know, can we get access to your data? So, and this is within our own company, right? So we're going different places, obviously talking, and yeah, you spend weeks uh, sometimes just understanding what data is available, how to get to it, and then you go back to your home office and start doing the analytics. I mean, obviously, it's months and months. Um, that institutional knowledge. Or that context that you know, that you know, from the experience that I had or whatever team members have, I'm trying to bring that in real time as we go on to different projects. Um, so you really try to uh, connect the, those experiences, and that's you can think of it as a sort of a graph that that connects. You know, a lot of people think of graphs in terms of ontologies or et cetera, but really thinking about the, the reusability, uh, the experience, like the last uh, metric that I saw, the one that Kurt just saw, you, we, we might have shared something via email. You know, it's not just about the, the reporting and the, the, the models, it's what we do every day um, in our workflow. So looking at analytics as a productivity uh, enabler. And so, you know, I might be looking at a Word document or an email or a PowerPoint. Um, at the same time, I'm looking at a, a chart within there. So how do we actually connect these things these, these items together, um, because most of the analytics we're running on at an ad hoc basis is uh, probably already answered, it's just that we didn't know about it. Um, and so having that ability to, as we were typing in almost like a search, has this question been answered before, before we even start a project, right? So that's that's really a lot of what the what the graph will, will hopefully uh, enable, is uh, sort of short circuiting an entire effort, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and finding those components that we can then build on. And just asking you to pull out your crystal ball, how far how far off are we from uh, from that future when you when you can have that sort of perfect knowledge of the graph, uh, maximal reuse of of institutional knowledge? How far off are we? Yeah, I mean it's pretty uh, it's pretty hard. I mean it's pretty if you if you want to really have uh, a real connection between all the entities that we're dealing with. I mean I think what we're trying to do uh, at one level is from a sort of the ground up. Uh, what are the actual uh, activities that people are working on? How are they interacting with data? So that's one angle. And then on top of that, you know, from the sort of top down is how are we structuring our decisions? How are we structuring our projects? So that, that knowledge management on the project side and then linking those two together. So this link between, you know, the, sort of the boardroom or PowerPoint uh, discussions into uh, interactivity. You know, that's that that's the sort of I would think the the, the holy grail in in a way if we can actually link those things, understand what data dr drove those decisions, um, and you know right now we've done a, a great job in terms of cataloging our data, understanding the what data is available, starting to look at reusable pipelines, um, and then I think the next level once we're able to build these applications, we can then understand the usage of those apps, uh, where people are sort of pulling insights from and what decisions they're making off of. And I think that will be the, the sort of the next level. That sounds great. Let's, well, let's, uh, let's work together. Let's, uh, let's get there together. Um, looking forward to working that, uh, and we'll working with you on that, Chris. Um, thank you so much, Chris. Uh, that, that's been fascinating to hear about the, uh, the journey that you've been on and, you know, it's, a, it's been a long journey. Uh, you're saying 10 or 15 years, right? Uh, the, that we've been at it and it looks like the, uh, the future is bright. So thank you very much, Chris. Yeah. Thanks, Kurt.